like crap and was swamped and uh, I don't have any other excuse other than I just forgot about it. That's so, okay, so. not a problem. And you know, I'm 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 again between a rock and a hard place trying to decide whether I even want to get involved in something else that I know this is serious. It's just like every every fucking time I do something, you know, just like speaking out about Joe, it just, you know, my life gets dragged through the mud. But, you know, Eric Good, you know, doing his doing his thing on Netflix. on Netflix about Carol and Joe. All right, he's okay. you know, he's he's been filming here for 2 years. And and we found out he's turning. He's trying to turn a bunch of shit on us. And he's trying to get people to talk bad about us. Which is who gives a shit? I know what we've done and what we haven't done. We haven't done anything, so I, I'm I'm not worried about that. And everything that we've done that Joe's accusing us of, we told you about. You know, from Logan Paul's Tiger, all that crap. So we, um, Eric Good was here about four months ago, and and his 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 assistant showed up at the house. Eric was supposedly at the hotel. And she says, Eric is so depressed and so bummed. Could you guys take him out? You know, Lauren and I go to strip clubs, you know, once a month or once every couple months. And I said, I said, yeah, I said, we can take him out. So we take him out to the strip club that night. And he, um, you know, little did we know, he's just trying to turn it around on us and trying to make it all, huh? A month and a half ago? Yeah, not four months ago. Oh, a month and a half ago, Lauren says. Seemed long, longer than that. But anyway, he, he sits down, and they can't film inside a strip club, but I think he's got, he's got intentions of trying to get us to talk after this. So he goes and he, he sits down. We've got all the strippers around us, because every time we go in there, the strippers see who we are, and they come sit at our table. And Eric pulls out his... Um, his wallet and he starts handing these girls cocaine all right and i already told him that i didn't i don't do coke i don't like coke but he's trying to get everyone at our table to you know to drug him up to talk well he starts talking about the young the young chick that he's dating and he hands me his phone and and i'm flipping through seeing all these you know she's 19 20 years old but he i i come across a picture of eric sitting bare-ass naked with a bare-ass naked nine-year-old girl sitting in his lap. And, yeah. And as I'm swiping, the picture, like, froze. And Eric puts his big claws over there, and he's trying to flick it off of that picture, and it won't, it won't move. It's like the thing is stuck, or his fingers are greasy or something. So I just handed him his damn phone back, and I'm like, you know what, you piece of shit. After... And what we found out is, is like, we've been trying desperately to get Eric Cowie clean. You know, we've sent him to rehab once. We just went and picked him up yesterday um, from rehab. And because we, we'd sent him up for detox up in the city. And now we're putting him in, in a rehab bed in Ada as soon as they have a bed available. Well, come to find out, Eric Good has been bringing him bottle after bottle after bottle of um of whatever drink eric vodka or whatever he drinks i don't know and you know to try to get him to talk and it's just he's just a real scumbag but you know and and he's trying to he's feeding glover with alcohol trying to get glover to change his stories and it's just like you know it's just it's just do i get involved in this again how do you how do, you, how do you even start with with something like this? I know it's not it's not your not even in your jurisdiction, but you know if he's he's a he's a the guy's worth about twenty million bucks. We found out he's he's got all these really high end hotels and nightclubs in New York City and L A. And you know these pictures that he has on his phone, he can delete them, but I'm sure you guys could get them back even if he does. But. What the fuck do I do? Do I just stay out of it or just... It's totally up to you, but I'll, I'll start my response by this. Remember way back when, when you were talking to him and you were he was wanting to talk to me and I was like, man, I don't know. And you're like, he's a good guy and I don't know. Yeah. I think he means well and I was always a little skeptical. Yeah, you were right. So. I mean, I, I, 
Uh, you were right. Well, he he plays your he plays your somebody, best friend. When somebody's doing these exposés and these shows, I don't know that they always want the truth, other than they want to get as much dirt and as much sideline story as they do the truth of the event. Right. Dude, what? he's he's he is gonna demolish Carol Baskin. You, he's just going to completely, and, and it's not that she doesn't deserve some of it, you know, because she does, but he, she has, he's been leading her on that this is, you know, showing her side of the story and her side of the argument about big cats and captivity. He's, he's going to. Baskin spoke so highly of him. Oh, he, she's, <laughs> he, he has. I, I've seen the interviews. It's not like I'm speaking out of, you know, not knowing what I'm talking about. I've seen, he's, he's brought his phone in here and he's shown me the interviews with the Hillsborough County Police where they say, we know she did it. And, you know, we she's always been our suspect. We just can't prove it. And no body, and no, body no crime. She went and talked She went and talked to, um, to Don Lewis's kids who had a letter that Carol had written them warning them that they had better never talk to the press. They never, you know... Trying to intimidate and scare these, you know, these Don Lewis's kids, and she's she's and she's gonna be. Sh- and Eric says, "I know she's gonna sue me." And so, but the thing is, he's he's paid everybody. You're not supposed to pay people for their story. Their story is supposed to be unbiased, and you can only pay for content, which is the video and the audio, and. He's paid, you know, Eric, he's he's paid everybody here to tell their story. So, you know, I I just don't know. I don't want it to seem like I'm turning him in because I'm afraid of what he's going to say because it's it's but the kitty porn well, shit is but, not cool. But he's going to say what he wants. Right. He's going to say what he wants to say because you know that. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um I don't know. I think, you know, look back on it historically was he buttering you up and getting close to you to get information or was he buttering up and get close to you because he valued your friendship he, he didn't value my friendship it's it's been from day one everybody's telling me he's just he's tried to get people to say you know did jeff really fly girls in here from other cities to sleep with him and lauren you know how did he pay for his ferrari and how much money did he pay joe for the for the zoo he's just he's just sticking his nose in places where it doesn't belong and for stupid you know for for he, he, I think he's just trying to make all of us in the in this industry look like a bunch of dumbasses, which we probably all are. But you know, it's it's still you don't. Well, let's let's go back to what you have. One, you've got him giving white powder to some girls at the bar. Yep. Based off your experience and knowledge, you believe it to be cocaine. By the way, it was packaged. By the way, they used it, or maybe by something that he said. But yeah. there's no other corroborating evidence, no video, no audio, no nothing other than your story. We have pictures of, Lauren was taking pictures of him in the strip club that night, and we know the strippers that took the cocaine down to the bathroom and used it. Um, but again, they're strippers, you know? Who's, how much credibility does a stripper have? Well, they have some. I mean, if you ever had them say, yeah, you know, that... That guy, Eric, that was good cocaine that he gave us the other night. That would be good corroborating information. But then you go back through the picture, come through, and you got a, the, the naked one-year-old on his lap. I mean, you can report that, and I think that's how you do it, but what's your evidence at the end of the day? I know. Just my word against his. Yeah, and um, your word, the you saw that... Unfortunately, it's not enough to get a warrant for the cell phone. Okay. So, and you need the cell phone to corroborate it, or you somehow or another, if you were tight with him, you'd look at it again and then try to get a video of it on his cell phone, something like that. Right. Um, that's the that's the tough part. And that was the tough part looking back on this case. It was tough knowing what was going on and knowing what was happening. And you and I have had this conversation many times. Knowing it and proving it are two different things. Right, right. So, mm-hmm. um, I... Just let it go? I don't know. that. I don't think you should let it go. I don't... Man, I think 
I think you you have a duty, especially as a father of a little daughter, you have a duty to report that. Whether or not it goes anywhere or not, you have a duty to at least put it on record that you noticed it, you observed it, you're horrified by it. And, um, you know what I thought? The second I saw that, you know whose picture hit my face was that Jeffrey Epstein... Because, you know, the rich, rich guy owned all this. He's just thinking he can do anything. And all these naked pictures, there, was, there wasn't just that one. There was a picture of about 20 grown adults standing there all naked. And with, again, with Eric sitting like the king in a throne. And he had this little young naked girl in his lap. So later in the day, I asked or the next day, I asked him, I said, do you have any kids? He goes, no. He says, I don't have any kids. Because I'm thinking, right, maybe that's his daughter. And maybe this is just... You know, like an artsy fartsy, you know, type. But he has no kids, so he had someone else's young child, bare ass sitting in his lap when he's naked. Yeah, I uh, even if I knew there was no evidence, I would. If you ask me, as not a law enforcement guy, just another grown man. Yeah. And who who would you who who would you report that to? It didn't happen here. It happened in it happened in the strip club in Oklahoma City. Would that be something for like and Andy? You know, you can call Andy and see uh, if FBI is interested in it. It's going to come down to, and it could be something that you just make notification and be like, "Look, Andy, I know there's probably not much you can do, but I know what I saw." And I just want authorities to know what I saw. Okay. So, um, if, so if he ever gets pinched in the future, you can come back here and I'll tell you what I saw. Yeah. And then, then when you, I mean, in your conscience, you go to like, I can prove it, but I didn't let it go either. I yeah. did what I could. All right. Yeah. When is that son of a bitch going to go to a federal... He keeps, <laughs> he keeps going up there and revealing all these crimes, blaming me again for the Logan Paul cat that he sold because my, I didn't have cubs at that, you know. My cats were too young to have cubs. And, and he's blaming me for the Abraham cub that went to Carl and Kayla Mitchell. That, that, you know, he's just lying and lying and lying and lying still. I think in his last ditch effort. But... When will he? When does he go to the actual federal? Do you know? No, I was hoping he'd already be there. Um, and he's lied so much, and he's lied in open court so much. Even if he had some real damning evidence, I know it'd be very hard to believe because he's tainted any truth that could ever come out of his mouth. Yep. Yep. And like the judge said in court, when you try to orchestrate. Selling those lions while you're in jail shows your systemic history of not caring about any laws or anything. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have a prayer on appeal, does he? I don't think so. Isn't an appeal appeal? You don't get to introduce new evidence. You just no. if if the if the three panel judge thinks that there was an egregious error, that's the yeah. that's. Yeah. What they review. Is the court record from the stenographer, from the testimony, and all that, and this allocation yes, that goes with it. Mm. And if there's an error, then they can send it back down. But you don't put new evidence on. Nobody testifies. Nobody does anything. They just go back over the um, the court record. Yeah, that's what I thought. He keeps. I'm. In, I can't wait to tell my story on appeal. Shut up, Joe. <laughs> you go back to a criminal one course. I. I. I think he's got a bunch of jailhouse cellmate lawyers who got him. Got him convinced. Yeah. All right. Well, fuck. Well, there's no telling what mudslinger will come for this good thing. We'll just just do your best. Take care of you. Take care of your daughter and Lauren. Yeah, I don't. I, the, the, there's going to be buds slung on everybody. That's the purpose of this Netflix thing. Is not the, it's not like a Nat Geo professional deal that comes out. Right. But it's we didn't think a podcast would be a big hit. 
Yeah, it's like it's like that stupid podcast, you know. He, I, I'll, I'll fess up to what I, I've I've already fessed up to what we did. My participation and everything. I, I, but but to to have the lot, you know, to have the stupid, like if Lauren's parents, who are Mormon and 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 you know very religious, to turn this thing on and say, yeah, Jeff and Lauren fly girls in from Las Vegas to fuck them, and you know whose business is that, and what does it have to do with Joe Exotic? You know, it's yeah. it's just sensationalized crap, and that's what Netflix is for. Yeah, it's it's no documentary. Yeah, yeah. Well, all right, buddy. Well, we were just concerned on what to do. With I, I just didn't know what to do with, you know. I I don't want it to look like retribution, but I also, it also is just very disturbing, you know. If you see some product like that, that's not like reporting just smoking a joint. I mean, yeah, big deal. Yeah, yeah. We all know or believe that. Child yeah, that's stuff. that's just you disgusting. Have, yeah. you, just, you have a duty to report it. Wherever it goes, you have no control, but you have a duty to report it. Yeah, and in and, and drugs, even though I've told you, you know, there's only a couple I would even, that I even like, but I, I don't care about his drug use. I don't care, but I hate, but I hate that he would, that he would take alcohol to an alcoholic who's trying to get better, who works with tigers on a daily basis, and he's, he's bringing him gallons or half-gallon jugs of booze to, to make his story to make his story better, you know? And how irresponsible is that? I've already called Netflix, their legal department, and I'm, I'm, he, we, we got the 1099 or whatever. They, he, he paid us $17,000 for our story. So... You know, I've got the 1099 here that I'll file on my taxes this year, but it's, you know, so, you know, he's just, it just doesn't seem like a very sincere cause when he's pumping an alcoholic. Oh, you know what else he did? Listen to this. He was here the other day and Travis's mom calls and, you know, she's a mess. You you remember Travis's mom, right? Right. And she was... Eric wanted to meet with her, and she was she was living in some apartment trying to describe where she was in Paul's Valley, and she asked Eric if he had the stuff for her. And, he, yeah, so he's feeding her probably meth to get her. Yeah. Yeah. And she sounded, she was a mess. I can't believe he put her on speakerphone, and I don't think he expected her to say, did you, did you bring me the stuff? And what else could he have to take her, you know, other than, other than dope? All right, that's a shame. Yep, yep. But, all right, buddy, how's your life? Good, man, good. Just uh, feeling a little under the weather right now, but... Um, Where'd you go on vacation? I went to New Orleans to watch the Super Bowl and have a 50th birthday party with some friends of ours. That's cool. Where'd you, wa- Where'd you watch the Super Bowl? One of the bars? <laughs> At uh, yeah, at a place called Good Browns. Huh. Yeah, it's a good time. Made a lot of good seafood. Now, who are you, who are you who are you wanting to win? I was from Kansas City, so it worked out well. Wasn't that amazing? The way they yeah, came back. Great, great game. Yep. Yeah. So got back, and now I'm just trying to get my feet back. I mean, those little quick trips are, are tough. Yeah. Just on the go all the time. You fly down there Saturday, fly back early Monday morning. I'm back to work, so of course we didn't get back Monday till late. Um, yeah. All issues with travel, but in any event, um, just trying to get going on some other stuff. I've got a lot of reptile cases going right now, so. Oh, always- one one more question, and Carol Baskin brought this up. No, Carol Baskin or Joe? There's some stupid thing posted the other day. Is it or is it not? In in. You know me. I don't like. I don't want to sell anything. Um, I, I've I've been needing money lately, and I could have sold all these hybrids, but I don't because I, I want them. I don't want to sell them. But what is the law? Carol seemed okay. Peta 
PETA got me inserted into Tim Stark's lawsuit because Tim Stark dumped off four lion cubs here. PETA demanded them back, and I, I told PETA, I said, well, you can have them back when you pay me for the eight months that I've cared for them, and you pay the medical bills because one was real sick, and I paid all the vet bills. So Carol Baskin makes some comment that Jeff Lowe will be going down soon because she he, he got brought into um, Tim Stark's um, – um, 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 trafficking across state lines of, of of cubs. But then she said something like that even if I have hybrids, ligers to ligers to ligers, if I sold one to you in Texas, that's a violation of the Lacey Act, is it? What she's trying to say, she's trying to use that Captive Wildlife Safety Act to say that it is. And by letter of the law, it does prohibit the sale under the Captive Wildlife Safety Act. But there, it's it's an un that law exists. It is. It's just tough by the way it's written. Yeah. To get it prosecuted, but huh. can. Say it is a true law that exists, yes. And you can look up Captive Wildlife Safety Act. Okay. And it, it's underneath the Lacey Act. So it's charged underneath the Lacey Act. But you can you can look at it and read it and say that it doesn't matter if species and hybrids and everything else are covered. But there's some nuances in the law that make it very difficult. Not impossible. It just makes it very difficult to prosecute. Because that's what I was thinking here this whole time. We could have given you all kinds of hybrid sales, but you you acted like, you know, I can't do anything because it's a hybrid, so. Well, I I knew what battles I wanted to. Right, right, right. Yeah, so I knew where the the easiest, not the easiest because I make it sound like I was lazy. I, I know. I knew, knew the endangered species, the tigers and the lions would not bring in the the conflict right the contradictions of the hybrid caveat and the captive wildlife safety act so all right uh, so if that's, if that's, if that's, if that's all I had I'd have tried to run that battle but I had better charges than right that. right right well, I just, I'll just keep that in mind. I mean, I, I always I always thought it was legal if I wanted to sell Scotty Brown, uh, you know, a liger that that would have been legal, but. Look at it and read it. You can see. I know you study that stuff and try to understand it, but you can see what it says in the law. It's Captive Wildlife Safety Act, and it, it's a it's a cumbersome read. It's cumbersome to enforce it to as a as an agent. Now, is it just about what if it was? Um, is it just endangered species, or is it any wildlife? Big cats. Just big cats, specifically big cats. Okay. Yep. All right. Too confusing. Yeah, it mm-hmm. is. It is. For somebody who's been on 25 years, I read it, scratch my head, and go like, oh, there's a nature way to charge something. Yeah. All right, buddy. Well, we still want you to come see us someday and meet this little no, girl. I, and I, I need to see her before she goes off to college. Yeah, sure. that's right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate your call back and your time, Matt. All right, buddy. All right. Talk care. to you later. Like All right. I said, this is going to be some much for you. Just... Same advice I'm giving you all along. Don't the sources. Yeah, yeah. We'll do what we can do. All right, thanks, thanks, Matt. Okay.